Hi! This instructional video is a continuation of finding or solving all the zeros, solving for all the zeros of a function. That means in this case we have a polynomial and if you were to graph it, somewhere on the x-axis it's going to intersect at four points. Okay, the degree of the, exp the, degree of the exponent of a polynomial indicates the number of times the line will cross the x-axis. So we have to find the four factors, the four zeros, okay, that are the factors of this function. And on the last instruction, we talked about rational roots theorem, the rational zero theorem, where they are in a form of a p over q, and the p is all the factors of the constant, and the q represents all the factors of the leading coefficient. Now last time it was easy because we leading coefficient was 1, but now we have a 10. And let me show you how that works. So 12, all the factors are positive or negative 1. 2 is 1 negative because negative 1 times negative 12 is also positive 12. So we have to consider both positive numbers and negative. 3 times 4 is 12, so 4 is in there. 6 times 2 is 12. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay? And divide that by all the factors of the leading coefficient, which is positive or minus 1, 2 times 5, and 5, and 10. Now here's the problem. You have to mix and match not only the whole numbers, 1, 2 over 1 is 2, 3 over 1 is 3, 4 over 1 is 4, but we have to also think about 1 over 2, 1 over 5, 1 over 10, and repeat that with 2 over this could take a long time just to guess and check. So what's the best thing to do in that situation? That's right. Use a calculator. You begged your parents to buy you a graphing calculator over a hundred bucks? Now's the time to use it. So let's graph it. So we could see what the points are, at least guess, estimate, and then we could check it. So this is the model that we use in our classroom. And for the next example, I'm going to use the older version of this brand name, which many schools use. Okay, but first, let's try that one, okay? So for this to work, well, <laughs> Electronics 101, power on, uh, there it is. Okay, and we want to graph. So we have to move on to the graph function, execute. Oh, it's in a form of a function already, f of x or y. Now let's put this in. 10, variable x, press the key, the caret or exponent 4, minus 3x raised to the third power, minus 29, x, oh, here's a square function, squared, plus 5x, plus the constant 12. Enter. And this one says draw, so let's press that F key to draw, see what we get. Wow! That is so compressed, I cannot even decipher where it's going on the x. So we have to set the parameters, let's change the parameters on this uh, graph, shift V window, F3. Oh, there it is. This was so condensed, like 20 on one side and 20 on the other. It was so crunched up, I couldn't see. So let's change that. All I want is maybe up to three. So on the left side, make it up to negative three. Enter, execute, because a new information. And positive three on the right side of the Y axis, enter. And I don't care about the Y, so just let that slide the way it is. Now, let's exit, and given that same function, let's now draw, see what happens. There we go. All right. All right, so here we got something here. So now let's take a look at this. This graph, the line is intersecting the x-axis at this point, what appears to be negative one and a half. And also this point, that's a little more further to the left of the half point, so I have to kind of get estimate on that one. I don't know what that is. Maybe four-fifth? 
and four fifth is one of the possibility. You see that quotient? Four over five. And also, uh, I don't know what that is. I can only guess. But this thing, I think it does look like negative one and one half or negative three over two. That right there. I'm going to test that. Okay? And I think this is one, two, three, maybe three fifth, something like that. Okay? So let's try that one. Okay? So maybe three fifth as well. Let's try those two points. And we're going to test it. So let's, let's do this. Here we go. So we're going to use a synthetic division. All the leading coefficients, making sure they're in degree of sequential order. We got 10, minus 3, minus 29, plus 5, and finally the constant 12. Divide that whole thing by the first test point, negative 3 over 2. Negative 3 over 2. Okay? Let's do this. All right, here's what we get. Let me get a scratch paper. Here we go. So first thing we do is bring down the 10, the leading coefficient, and multiply negative 3 over 2 by 10. 2 reduces the 10 five times, and that becomes negative 15. Negative 15. Combine negative 18. Multiply that to this k possible k term, negative 3 over 2 times negative 18. 2 reduces 18 nine times. Negative 3, negative 9 is positive 27. Combine those two, then we get negative 2. Okay, so negative 3 over 2 times negative 2 cancels out. Positive 3. 5 and 3 combined gives you 8. Okay, so negative 3 over 2 times positive 8. 2 reduces 8 four times. Hello! Negative 12. Zero. And remember? Yeah. Remember the, the factor theorem? If the f of that inverse k becomes a zero, then that is the proper factor. So that's one of our roots. Found it. So now, we're going to take this new polynomial, which has been reduced by a degree of 1. So now it's 10x cubed minus 18x squared minus 2x plus the 8. Okay? And, oh, wait a minute. I see something here. I think I could actually reduce by factoring, by grouping. But let's go ahead and continue on to test to see if this is still correct. Now we're going to test a second one, negative 3 over 5, and see if that works. And what should be our dividend? Our coefficients 10, negative 18, negative 2, and 8. Bring down the first coefficient 10. And here we go with the scratch work again. So now, negative 3 over 5 times 10. 5 reduces 10 twice, negative 6. Negative 6. Combine, negative 24. Uh-oh. See that denominator 5? It's not going to cancel out the 24, is it? So this is not going to work. So what are the other choices? Well, looking at the graph, that doesn't look like a 2 fifth, not a 4 fifth, and maybe 1 half? I don't think so. So let's go over here. How about that one? Does that look like uh, maybe a 4 fifth? So let's test that one out. So take the same coefficients again, negative 18, negative 2, and 8, and test out the 4 fifth. Okay, so here we go. Bring down the leading coefficient 10. 4 fifth times 10 reduces by 2, 8, 8. Combine, negative 10. Still looking good. 4 fifth possible k times a negative 10 reduced by 2. Negative 8 again. Okay, negative 2 and negative 8 combined, negative 10. Multiply to the possible k. 4 fifth times negative 10, reduced by 2, negative 8, negative 8, hello, 0. Okay, factor theorem prevails again. So this is also one of our possible case. Okay? So now we end up 
with another new polynomial with a degree less. Okay, last time it was a cube, now it's going to be a square. So we have now 10x squared minus 10x minus 10. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Let's factor out the 10 and see what happens. x squared minus x minus 1. Darn, this is not factorable. Okay, only way you're going to get the middle term is 2 and 1, but that's not a 2. So I guess we have to use... Do you recall what you're about to do when we identify the A, B, and C? That's right, the quadratic formula. This is the whole jambalaya of quadratic studies. You're using the rational theorem, the factor theorem, you're using the synthetic division, you're using the, 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 the x minus k, factoring, and finally quadratic formula. Let's plug it in. Negative times negative 1 plus minus square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 all over 2 times negative, uh, no, not negative 1, just 1. That's a 1 plus or minus inside a radical. 1 plus 4 is 5 over 2. So there you have it. <laughs> what? You say <laughs> the factors are, okay, negative 3 over 2. The rational zeros are negative 3 over 2. Negative 3 over 5. Because that's a plus or minus. 1 is 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. And finally, 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. And that radical, 